Yo guys, this is Smith, and welcome to the Tear Smite God Reveal. Tear. God Yo, hold on, Myth. I got this one. Today, we're talking about fucking Tear. As most of you know, I hate that god. But hey, that's not really news, and if I was just screaming in this video, then you'd be like, oh, well, we knew that was coming. So we're doing the opposite of that. We're gonna treat Tear like what he is. A fucking joke, man. This god is literally a joke of a kid. And I'll show you why. Little disclaimer, I know that Tyr is not completely fucking broken. Wait, actually he is no. Huh, well, that is kind of weird. I was gonna say he's not that broken and all that stuff as, you know, uh, it was the case with Apollo. <laughs> it's just, you know, a god that I don't like and stuff like that. But actually, since the last recent uh, buff, he is pretty fucking strong. Maybe not completely broken, but stupidly strong, ban worthy and all that shit. So, hey, even more of a reason to make this video, right? Let's go. Tyr's passive is called Unyielding. Unyielding sounds like a very strong passive at first, a really good passive. It decreases the duration of quite a few crowd control effects to one second. So we're talking hard crowd control here. Specifically, stuns, taunt, fear, intoxicates, and mesmerize. And you know what's not in there? Knock up. So hey, that's balanced, right? we we'll get into that later. Honestly, it is an ultra strong passive for a warrior who can definitely frontline and take some CC to his face that way and just soak it up and still go in, which is really, really nice for frontliners if you've ever played a frontliner. And to add to that, it also stacks crowd control reduction. So if you get hit by a second crowd control ability, it will have normal crowd control reduction down from your one second. So that's also very beneficial. So hey, that's just, you know, the passive. That's a good start, right? Let's go for fearless. So Fearless is a weird ability, because it's somehow a pull and a knock up at the same time, or at different instances of it, because you can beat the first part and not get knocked up again and blah blah blah. So, uh, whatever that is, you know. It is not the best CC in the game, because it is classified as a knock up slash knock back. They ha are in the same category for CC, however it is a knock back, and most knock ups in place are a little better just to set stuff up. But it's still a really good CC, especially because you can displace enemies into the place you want to put them. That's just the function of this ability. Now let's look at the damage. If you consider that it swings two times in his offense stance, then it's a total of 480 base damage plus 100% scaling on a single ability that has another use. Just to put that in perspective, Bologna's ultimate, ultimate has 500 damage and 50% scaling. So Tyr's ability almost always does more damage than Bologna's ultimate. And that's just his one, and just one instance of his one. But hey, that's fine, right? And uh, also this ability has an insanely high width. If you look at this here, you can basically pick enemies up from nearly standing in front of them or them being behind you or them being like on the edge because the ability itself is wider than Tyr's model even because that makes sense and it's totally hard to hit that way, right? He is also immune to knock up. Remember how I talked about the passive and said that, you know, it's kind of not perfect because that doesn't work for knockup and knockback? Well, that part is here, you're completely immune to it as long as you dash. There you go. And then, that ability is still not done, because it has a defensive stance dash as well, which is another 240 damage and 50% scaling on top. So in total, this ability has a glorious 720 damage and 150% scaling. Let's compare that to Hercules ultimate. Ultimate, once again. That ability has 800 damage and 100% scaling. So most of the time you'll probably deal more damage with a Tears 1 in both stances than Herc's ultimate, which is a high damage ability. Obviously, you can hit that a little differently, but just put that number in perspective a little bit there, right there, you know. What Phyllis also does is it creates kind of an automatic safe zone in solo lane early on because of this and power cleave. That's the same thing that Hercules has with his one, that when an enemy comes too close to your tower, you just push them into it and let the tower do the work. Which is really nice early on if you want to play safe, because you really don't have much of a problem that regard. So hey, nice bonus there, right? That brings us to his two, when we're talking about bonus. His two is power cleave. Power cleave also has two swings, because it's also a double stance ability. And it has a very smooth animation cancel, so you can use it right after a basic and then maybe switch stance after and use the second iteration of Fearless after yet another basic. So that's pretty nice for some extra quick damage if you want to play it that way. It does a knockback to anyone who's knocked up by anything, not just by your one, but anyone. And that basically continues what is already the most annoying CC in the game past its normal duration. So you get extra duration on an CC that everyone hates. Isn't that lovely? Also, you can combo it with Fearless to push your enemies into tower from fuck knows where. If the one in, in itself wasn't enough to push somebody into tower, 
get the two on top of that pushing even further. The damage is 220 plus 65% scaling. That's still solid damage, solid base damage right there. And you get it twice. So we're still talking about 440 damage and another 130% scaling. The cooldown goes down from 12 seconds to 8 seconds, so you can basically spam it. It is still usually maxed out over a 480 base damage and 100% scaling ability being his one, because it has more than just that to it. That one ability has so much to it that it's worth leveling it over an ability that in total can deal 720 base damage. Is that in itself not absurd enough? Well, oh, I don't know. It has a heal. It has a heal. A heal that heals up to 105 per target hit, meaning it can hit, it can proc four times, we get into that in a second, which is 420 healing. Smoke weed every day. So you get 420 healing, and as if that wasn't enough, you get double healing on the first friggin' character you hit. I don't even know why that is a thing. Why does an ability that is clearly depending on how many characters you hit have an extra effect for the first one? Because for the first one, it procs twice. And that is 210 healing on a single target alone, if you just hit them on their own, no matter what they do. That is more healing than Sobek gets on his base healing when hitting three targets, because he gets 180 plus 30% scaling, which is usually less because he doesn't really build power. Ain't that freaking great? I know, I know, we're not supposed to compare gods here, but Sobex and Tyr's ability are really, really similar. And because of that, it's just so, so questionable. So why? Why does he get so much healing when he hits a single target? And why does he get even more for hitting multiple targets then? At least leave it at the single target bonus heal then. Nope, we're getting both. Ability number three. We had some nice times already. Let's look into the next one. They can't be that bad, right? Third one is change stance which kind of ties into his 1 and 2. Change stance allows you to get extra 50 power for your offensive stance and extra 50 protections for your defensive stance. If you don't realize how strong that is on Warriors, you usually build Titan's Bane at best and not really other power items, then just understand that Tyr has very high scalings and that extra power really benefits from the scalings, or the other way around rather, and that way he can get some decent damage off despite of being a warrior. The extra protections also help because he basically sometimes needs a little less in terms of defensive items because, you know, you'd rather have some more damage than overcap. It also refreshes cooldowns and I don't know why that is a thing. If you max out this ability, it goes down to a 10 second cooldown, meaning that if you get cooldown reduction, which you always do on tour, you will get down to 6 seconds with cooldown reductions, which means you can use two of your abilities every 6 seconds, no matter what, because the cooldowns get refreshed. Because that's a good idea, right? And now for the big deal here. Tyr got buffed! And that shit's available on level freaking 1! Ain't that a glorious fucking idea? You know, that god was already performing decently in most 1v1 trades. He had a bit of a rough late game phase and, you know, he needed a bit of a buff maybe here and there. I still didn't think that he really needed one, but it's arguable. But we are completely removing the need to level this ability. We have this ability for free now. We can just, you know, use two abilities on level 1 because that's a logical decision, Hyrus. We'll talk about that more later. We'll just look at the ultimate first. Lawbringer, 450 base damage and 120% scaling. That actually sounds like a very reasonable damage number if you look at the rest of his kit. 120% scaling on a god that already gets 50 free power is quite a bit. And I don't really see why it's necessary, but you know, the base damage isn't completely freaking out of this world. What the biggest problem with this ability is, is not it's slow either. It's a 3 second slow for 25%, you know, we've seen worse. The biggest issue is the fact that it is CC immune and a leap. And you know what that means? Tyr has three escapes, of which two are dashes, meaning you can get out of many th different things with that, and even if one dash gets interrupted, you still have another dash. But after that, you still have a leap that is CC immune, and that gets you out of pretty much everything in the freaking game. And I don't know why that is a thing. I don't know why a warrior would need that out of all gods, and I don't know why you need three escapes in total. How are you supposed to kill a guy that has 3 escapes, 50 free protections, and a 420 heal that heals 210 health at least? Like, like how is that, like, just, just how is that logical design-wise? Like, anyone give me an idea, like, a warrior, a warrior, a tanky warrior, 
needs an escape and another escape and another escape with CC immunity, meaning there are different kinds of escapes as well, so you can escape from everything. And then he also needs a selfie. And then he also needs to have most of that every six seconds, because, you know, why not? Why? <laughs> Okay, so talk about counter building tier is also fun. Counter building tier requires Magi's Blessing, Brawler's Beat Sick, Titan's Bane, and some sort of physical defense. You got that? That is what you need if you really want to be effective against the tier. You need Magi's Blessing to counter his knockback, knock up. You need Brawler's Beat Sick to counter his self heal. He's one of the few gods where you literally need Brawler's Beat Sick just for him to counter his self heal. You need Titan's Bane to go through his defenses, and you usually need some more defense because Magi's alone is not going to cut it against a tier. That's how much you need just to counter tier if you are against him and you're playing in a role that, you know, allows to actually counter. Most warriors will just go tanky and not care about him, really. And then there's also the fact that knockback is extremely unfun to play against. It's one of the most unfun abilities overall to play against. And now, with his buff, I'd like to point out that this guy has better early clear than gods like Fenrir, who are known for having a great clear. He's kind of on the level with Anubis and stuff like that. Simply due to the fact that he can use his two ones, he can use basics in between, he doesn't need to channel like Anubis for example. And he will have blue stone pendant most of the time, so he will get those extra procs with most others not being able to go into that. And he also gets guaranteed AoE damage on all the minions all the time, whereas for example Fenrir has to wait with his brutalize. That's true, that is true, that is okay. <laughs> that is true right now, and that's... All I have to say about this, and I'm giving the mic to somebody else who can tell you a little more about this guy, because he's played him a lot. Uh, yeah, Duke Sloth, uh, before I actually give my, uh, you know, tier rant uh, collab uh, audio file, I just wanted to let you know the, uh, the check you sent me, it, it didn't actually go through, so if you could actually get back to me, you know, send me that, uh, that money I need, because, uh, you know, I'm not actually going to do this if, you know, I'm not getting paid. Because, you know, I didn't agree with you with any of the things you said about freaking Tyr, the, the the most badass god in the game. So, uh, yeah, Duke Sloth, if you could just get back to me and, you know, and maybe pay me, pay me. Just be good. No. That's, no. That's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, be aware that this is a rant, kind of a joke video. Don't take it too serious. Also, if you want one of the tier buff was needed t-shirts, they are linked down in the description below. So you can, you know, show your love for them tier buffs. And huge shout out to Mithimu and Double Tap for helping me out with the video. Their links are both in the description down below. I think most of you know them if you don't check them out. Thank you guys for watching. See you for the next one in two days. Duke Sloth, out.